mostly condenser contenders considered. They're all costly. They're all condensers, as far as I know. They're all contenders. And I'm going to consider them. Firstly, the Earthworks SR40V. I've reviewed all of these separately. So a brief overview. £999, so a thousand in the UK. World class, it says. Designed for performance, fre frequency from 20 to 40. Earlier I read 30, but... Uh, reproduces uh, subtle details. It's meant to be fast, extremely accurate. The next is a de facto, DPA de facto. This is a linear example. That's £838 in England. And it's for a stage vocals, uh, true studio sound to the live stage, extremely linear, so on and so forth. And the cheap one <laughs> is uh, Neumann KMS 105, well known. Studio grade for vocals on stage, studio quality again, goes on about the... Uh, filters, pop filters, and so on and so forth. As you may know, there are kind of three versions, tight, super cardioid, and unaffected by extreme pressure levels. Physically, I shall put them in front of my face to stop it focusing on me. Hopefully you can see them. Uh, roughly the same size, the DPA is longer. Of course, I've got my hand in the way. That's useful, isn't it? Anyway, weight, Quite substantial, the uh, Earthworks. DPA feels lighter. Maybe a touch heavier than the DPA, but less than the Earthworks, the Neumann. On the Neumann. Hmm. Sounds rather musical to me, sounds like brass. The DPA. And finally, the Earthworks. Which I believe is uh, steel. Just because it makes a difference. Show you what they came in. That's the Neumann bag. Padded. Goes in like that. Velcro fastener and then more Velcro fasteners. So, yeah, it's okay. A few gaps maybe there if you're unlucky and it falls out. I don't know. Undoing it. It's, mm, then you have to undo this. And then... Possibility of it... Uh, so, DPA with a padded bag which is a rather tight fit. So once it's in there, there's no play at all. And then when that uh, taper of the barrel gets into that corner, which it would if you're holding it like that, there's a little bit of a tug just to get the thing out. And you're in danger of that. How much would it cost, man? Give a bit more. Or actually something nicer altogether. Very expensive mic. The Earthworks kind of go in the other direction. It came in a plastic, very secure, padded kind of flight case thing, which I'm not going to take to gigs. So great, but so I put it in a pencil case, which is padded, and then it's got extra padding in there. Again, it's a bit small, but that's what I do. Well, before I plug them in, I'll have a look at the charts that are supplied, or you can find online which will be on the screen. Tried to line them up with the, wherever the kilohertz and the hertz are. So the DPA, remarkably flat, um, starts turning off 
well, really around about 200 hertz. No proximity trace. So I didn't really look at this when I bought it. That would have been a bit of a warning sign for me, maybe, if I'd seen that. Looking at the, the, the tailing off there. Looking at the KMS, then obviously the KMS is uh, shaped compared to the other two. It's the red one in the middle. And there is a proximity trace. Without the proximity trace, it starts dropping off around 200 hertz. And you've got that boost around either side of 10 kilohertz. Looking at the earthworks at the bottom, A is a bit suspicious, isn't it? Because <laughs> that's... Uh, Yes, it's a straight line. Uh, has, I, imagine that, I imagine they've all been smoothed. But, uh, yeah, okay. And it goes up to something I can't figure out. 30, 34, let's say 40, I don't know. It goes high. And going low, it just keeps going straight. At one metre, it starts dropping off at, uh, yeah, around 200 hertz. But that's a long way off. And again, no proximity trace. And on all of these, there is a proximity effect. So make of that what you won't. I'm going to plug them in. I've balanced them up. <laughs> yeah. Got a different way of doing it. Don't know if it's any better, but I've done my best. And we'll see. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to go through them in the order that they're in front of me. So Earthworks, DPA, and then the Neumann. I'm on the 33 at the moment. So I shall kill that and use this one and see what uh, see what I see. This is the Earthworks SR40V, and immediately I notice that, which is nice enough compared to this, I think, and I can sense looming is uh, yeah a little bit of that when I bring it in. And if I bring it right in, yes. Yeah, so great for me. I've got control over it. Of course, these are, these are both earthworks, so if there's an inherent sound going on, then it's, it's not going to show up. But what can I do? I've got to have something. So that's what I notice when I do that. Just go back to the 33. That's what I notice when I do that. Just go back. Well, it's a bit difficult to say. I notice a bit more. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, but not quite as low as this one. And a slightly different quality to that, to the hissing. On the 33, going to the DPA de facto linear. This is a DPA de facto linear. As soon as I uh, took an in-breath there, I heard the DPA de facto linear. DPA, DPA. So, uh, yeah, what I know, a little bit of that. It's okay. It's nice enough. I notice a kind of boxiness down there, which I think is, uh, if I bring it closer, yeah, the, 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 the real weight isn't there. So it um, leaves the upper parts more exposed on that. Going back to 33. This is back on the 33. Back on the 33, on the 33, on the 33, on the 33 on the DPA de facto, on the DPA. I noticed a bit more of that in there as well. Moving over to the Neumann. Before I do that, back on the 33 to our ears get accustomed. Moving over to the Neumann then. This is the Neumann KMS 105. This is the Neumann KMS 105. I noticed the top end there, sweet enough. Ah, oh, this one I called the Mascara. Sweet enough up the top there. Uh, quite accentuated, I feel. What about the bottom end there? Gets a little bit, uh, for me, a little bit of a honk. I think that's uh, proximity rising. Um, but seeing as it doesn't go low enough for me, it leaves, it rises too early for my voice. Uh, very popular mic with uh, lots of singers that I teach. Isn't that I'm talking now, it's a very aware of that all the time, but it's sweet enough. And if that's kind of deliberate to, get it across that's what's happening and then finally back on the 33 which has got more for me of that weight in there and the top very nicely balanced so that's that oh oh compared to each other yeah I will do that did 
dexterity business again, isn't it? Let's scratch them up. Why not? What they call a relic. Fender guitars do that, you know. They relic them, bash them up a bit and charge an extra thousand pounds. Maybe that's the future for me, I don't know. This is the Earthworks SR40V. This is the Earthworks SR40... Ooh, bit of I've got to watch that because it goes low. Earthworks SR40V. This is the DPA de facto. This is a DPA de facto. That's what I'm aware of there. This is a DPA de facto, no real. Mm. This is the Neumann KMS. Mm -hmm. More of that, but that's the thing for my voice that doesn't work so well. It's nice at the top there. I've noticed something with all of these. I'm going to go back through. This is um, perhaps a little bit coarse. I try not to be coarse generally. But uh, I thought it was quite interesting. You might not. I'm not going to switch things off, so you're going to hear it all. I'm going to take the capsule off. There's foam in this one, and just here, because I noticed some differences, so bear with the noise. This is the, this is the SR40V without the foam. Got to be very careful, there's some foam there. The SR40V without the fo foam. SR40V without the foam. SR40V with the foam. Can you hear? It's not as clear. Can you hear that is not as clear? Yeah, you've got to do something. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. So SR40V with the foam. SR40V without the foam. Somewhere in there is clearer. I've saved you the, uh, the tedium of me unscrewing it. I've done it already. Just ready to take off. This is the DPA de facto with the uh, the grill and the foam. DPA de facto with the grill and the foam. DPA de facto without the grill and the foam. And again, there, I... Uh, it sweetened uh, the top end for me. The DPA acto without the DPA acto without the the foam, the DP Acto, the DPA with the foam. Now the, the Neumann doesn't have foam anyway, it's got a complex system of uh, mesh, which I very much like the idea of. The, uh, the other two versions of this, the 104 and the 104 Plus, do use foam, and I, I don't know if it's down to that or maybe they're different, they are who knows, but I can sense that it's the mascara about this one is lost somewhat with uh, the others, the other two. And I wonder if it's to do with the foam. So if I take the grill off, there's a second one underneath, I'll leave that for the minute. And this is the uh, KMS 105. KMS 105, I'll take the other one off. KMS 105, KMS 105. KMS 105, KMS 105, KMS 105, KMS 105. Very slight difference, I think, but we're in the realms of madness. What are we going to do now? The hiss, the hum, and the tauntess. SR40V. With the DPA, I think I noticed some uh, kind of grit in the hiss. DPA again. Forty V. Thirty three.
DPA. Something I can sense. Neumann. <laughs> it's kind of smooth. Why would that be? I leave it to you. Humming. 33. 40V. Thirty-three's got more, but it is a wider pickup pattern, and the whole design of the thirty-three is to pick up not just the mouth. Maybe that's what I'm hearing. DBA. So with the DPA for me, the bottom's missing, so it leaves mm, the rest of it more exposed. Ah. Neumann. Even if I say that, you can hear straight away the difference. Mm -hmm. Quite likes that. That's where it starts to hump. Mm -hmm. Sweet up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 33 to finish. Yeah. Om. Om. Pointless for me if I'm doing stuff like that. Uh, 105. Oh, but a little bit. Oh, if you can bear it, back through. Oh, oh. Make of it as you will. What am I invited to sing? Am I in the mood for singing? I'm a musician, you see. And sometimes singing is a bit, uh, sometimes singing is a bit, uh, uh, sometimes singing is a bit of a, uh, uh, sometimes singing is a, ah, uh, yeah, sometimes, the 33, it's, it's, everything's there. So really, I'm not particularly invited Anyway, it's like, what do you want to do, dude? I'm going to keep up with you. Okay. What am I invited to uh, that sing? Then what am I invited to? Uh, uh, to uh, what, what am I invited to do? Go to town. Then what am I invited to? Yeah. Uh, so what am I invited to? Uh, uh, come, what am I invited to? Uh, what, uh, to uh, what am I invited? Yeah, a little bit of a. When I hear that muscularity, I want to. I don't want to go down there and use it. Uh, what am I invited to? Uh, yeah, somewhere in the middle, it's quite firm as well. It's a little bit pushy. What am I invited to? Uh, just very firm. Just again, it's like everything. What do you want? Where do you want to go? I'll go with you. DPA. What am I invited to? Uh, 
What am I invited to explore there a bit? What am I invited to think? And what am I there? What am I invited to? Ah, what am I invited? What am I invited? So that's not very uh, rewarding at all down there. So, so really, I'm, I'm really I'm thinking about being up there where you can, you can hear. T -t -t -t. That's nice enough. Yeah. The Neumann. What am I Neumann? What am I invited to sing with the Neumann? What am I invited to sing? Just once makes me want to, want, yeah, nice up there. I can hear everything. That's what the guy in the big band said. Hey, what am I invited to sing? Yeah, lovely. What am I invited to, to, yeah. What am I invited to, oh no. What am I invited to say? Oh yeah. It just hasn't got the force there. It's false. That part down there is false. Somehow it's got the, what a shame. Well, I don't say what a shame, it's just for me, isn't it? But I'd love to uh, come to that. What am I invited to? Uh, oh, yeah. What am I invited to? Uh, uh, what am I invited mm, The 33, yeah. So, it's not about this one. I'm going to do the 33 and the 40V, baby. I've done them enough, perhaps, by chance, but we'll see. So, yes, a couple of things then. The DPA is a very expensive mic, and I'm. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't work for me, and uh, I wondered if I'd had a forty one to start with, and then I looked, and read. I should have done before I bought it. Well, I might have bought it anyway, and uh, that cut off deliberate, eighteen dB. I think at one stage. I would love to hear it. Without that, because it alters the balance and it alters what I do as I hear as the feedback not whoop, feedback but you know and um I would love to hear it well it's got a bit of something when it's that's why I bought the linear thinking that it would be flat the whole way so I wonder if I might contact them I wonder if it can be done if it's a condenser it could even be um a trim pot kind of doubt it could be something in the circuitry which could be easily exchanged, though it's probably all um, surface mount, so that's probably not quite so easy as you might say. I don't know. I think I might get in touch with them and just say, listen, can you uh, modify it in some way for me? Um, free of charge. No? Okay. Price, voice style, and suitability. Well, they're all expensive kind of almost half the Neumann so it's shaped very high quality everything very high quality shaped so if that shape suits you usually it seems to me when we get to the real high end uh, manufacturers start dropping the shaping um, could have got EQ on the desk anyway but I'd say I'd kind of say good value. This one's quite old now. I've had it a long while. Well, ten years maybe. So I'd say good value. What it would suit. I probably wouldn't say uh, rock and shouting and blues and soul. It's kind of unnecessary. You don't really need all that. You don't need to pay that much to get that. And you probably it's not an enhancement particularly for that kind of music. So maybe folk. Yeah, any any acoustic type stuff classy stuff cabarets if it suits your voice it's fantastic i'd say dpa i think when i reviewed it i called it uh, el enigma what would it suit it's got that it does that quite well let's go on it whilst we're at it it's got yeah it's got that quite well quite out well uh, uh that sounds a little bit grainy to me so maybe rock if you need to push through, seems a lot of money to spend on a rock mic. I'm not saying that rock's going to be cheap, but you know what I'm saying, isn't it? Hopefully. Um, so I'm a little bit, I don't know, the SR40V. The SR40V. Who would this suit? Really, because it has everything. Um, well, obviously, acoustic stuff. If you like your Moscata, you haven't got it. You have to use a processor or EQ or something. But EQ is not quite the same because you just boost things. You don't, whatever that sweetness is, is probably not just frequencies. There's something else going on with uh, in there. So you might not get the sweetness just by boosting. You could use a processor valve thing or whatever, all sorts of stuff. 
so yes yeah, so acoustic singers people that need the clarity people that need the bandwidth i mean really out of the three i would choose this one rock it can handle it well because it hasn't got anything in particular if you've got that kind of voice and you need to push it or you're doing whatever those kind of things are, then it's just going to pick that up. Whether you like to hear all that uh, when you're doing stuff like that, it's another matter of the dynamics, smooth it out a bit. I don't know, it's just a, just a, very, uh, just a very fine mic, really, and it's got no particular, from what I can see, which if you want a lot, we can have it. Back on the 33 then, you can hear there's a difference between them. I think that's probably it. As a soul mic, if it's the only mic, then I'd have this out of these three. Next, you probably guessed I'd go for the Neumann. And for me, uh, finally, the DPA. So once again, I hope it hasn't been too long, and I hope it's been of uh, some use to you. And always remember, of course, it's uh, your voice, not mine. And your choice, not necessarily mine. Adios.